Nuclear experts from the U.S. and the U.K. are in Japan to advise TEPCO executives. In an interview with NHK World, they emphasize the company needs to improve communication and an international support network to help decommission the plant. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa reports. When a reporter calls me and has information uh, that TEPCO should have told us uh, as a member of the committee, that's the slow part that is unacceptable. Probably once Former U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission Chairman Dale Klein is a panel member of Tokyo Electric Power Company. He's been monitoring the company in the wake of one of the world's worst nuclear accidents. Klein visited Tokyo to advise TEPCO executives from a professional perspective. At Fukushima Daiichi, workers are still facing a series of problems. Company officials have been criticized for taking too long to respond to them when radioactive water flowed into one of the buildings in April. They announced the accident two days after workers found the trouble. I'd say speed of communication is still an issue. Klein is demanding to change the way TEPCO officials release information. They're still not at the level that they need to be. Uh, when you look at their handouts, they're still too complicated for the general public. A British expert on the panel looked at different angle. She emphasizes that support from the international community is necessary for TEPCO to safely proceed with the commissioning work. I think we are using our networks of nuclear experts to bring them into TEPCO to form a group of international expertise that TEPCO can call upon. She says bringing expertise and the competence from abroad will help gain the public trust and will ensure the decades-long process of decommissioning the plan succeeds. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World, Tokyo. Officials at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi power plant have investigated an incident in which highly contaminated water was allowed to flow into the wrong building. They say human error could be to blame. Water used to cool the plant's molten nuclear fuel becomes highly contaminated. Crews store it in nearby facilities to await processing. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials announced last month that about 200 tons of tainted water had been misdirected through pumps which should have been shut off. TEPCO officials told NHK that the water had also flowed into another structure. They say the pumping appeared to have started in the March 20th while workers were switching on their air conditioning system. The switches for the pumps were on the same control panel. Officials suspect the crew turned on the pumps instead of the air conditioner. They say the switches were numbered but were not clearly identified. TEPCO officials have agreed to work with a British firm in decommissioning the Fukushima nuclear plant. The agreement was signed between TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi Decontamination and Decommissioning Engineering Company and British company Sellafield in London. The UK firm has been engaged in mothballing a nuclear reactor in Britain. TEPCO officials plan to exchange information with Sellafield experts in managing contaminated water as well as in handling the decommissioning process. Sellafield is interested in the radioactive water treatment and robot technologies being used at the Fukushima plant. The real effects of Chernobyl The documents and the photographs, they don't want you to see. Why? Because it's a little bit too real. Yeah, the Chernobyl legacy. Fukushima was, is, was ten times worse and is still ongoing. A baby is active in its mother's womb. But the mother has been told that her child could be born with a serious disability. The baby looks healthy. Is there really something wrong? A 
new blood test for checking the health of unborn children is available. The test was introduced in Japan one year ago. It's been used by nearly 8,000 women, far more than anticipated. I decided to take the test because I'm older. When an unborn child is found to have a disability, its mother and her family face a weighty decision. Can they raise the child? Or should the pregnancy be terminated? Japan lacks a system for helping families make that decision. My love for the baby in my womb keeps growing day by day, but I don't have the courage to say, I'll have you and raise you. How should Japan deal with the fast-spreading prenatal test? Other countries face similar challenges. Germany introduced a law after a national debate. Counseling offices now support pregnant women and their families across the country. I got a lot of help until I began feeling stable. What does it take to support women forced to decide on a budding life? We'll take a look. Welcome to today's close-up. I'm Hiroko Kunia. The risk of a baby being born with a chromosomal disorder increases with the age of the mother. In Japan, one in four pregnant women are aged 35 or older as more women marry later in life. A simple blood test during pregnancy can now detect abnormalities in the developing fetus. The new test drew far more applicants than expected during its first year of use in Japan. It can be used to screen for three types of chromosomal disorders. Down syndrome, which often involves intellectual disabilities, and trisomy 13 and trisomy 18, which causes serious physical problems. If a woman gets a positive result in the blood-based test, amniotic fluid or other tests are conducted to produce a definite diagnosis. Amniotic fluid tests are available only to women who are at least 15 weeks pregnant. Depending on the results, the woman and her family may have to decide whether to have a baby with a chromosomal defect or get an abortion. The decision is particularly tough for the woman feeling the fetus growing inside her. The test shows that society puts importance on a woman's right to decide whether to give birth or have an abortion. But some are voicing concerns that the test could lead to selective birth. What problems will the woman's family face if she gives birth to a child at higher risk for disability? And what future will the child have? Japan introduced the test without addressing these issues. An academic society has drawn up guidelines requiring counseling by doctors or other medical workers before and after the test. But we found that women in Japan are forced to quickly make tough decisions without enough support. Travelers to Japan in March hit a record high. Behind the development is the weaker yen and also eased visa requirements for visitors from some Southeast Asian nations. Officials at the Japan National Tourism Organization estimate uh, 1.05 million people visited Japan last month. That's up more than 22 percent from a year before and marks a year-on-year year year rise for the 14th straight month. Travelers from mainland China rose 80 percent followed by those from Malaysia and Vietnam. Haneda Airport has recently started handling more international flights, and it does have easier access than Narita Airport to downtown Tokyo. The tourism officials say they hope this will encourage more people to visit Japan. The real. The FCC hasn't updated its cell phone radiation guidelines since 1996. In 2011, the World Health Organization's Agency for Research in Cancer listed cell phones as a possible carcinogen. But cell phones aren't alone in emitting radiation. All of those other wireless devices we're surrounded with spew it out too. Your PC, laptop, wireless routers, cameras, etc. None of the radiation these devices emit has been quantified or qualified. But it's something that's around us all the time now. We are living in a radiation-filled world. 
So it might be time for us to think about protecting ourselves because no one else is going to. If you're an Android device user, you can use a mobile app called N8, which is built to protect you from harmful, low-grade electromagnetic radiation. It only costs 99 cents and uses technology to deflect the radiation. If you're one of those people who use a laptop on your lap, a company called Defender Pad has developed a product for you. It's a pad you put between your lap and your laptop and it blocks both radio frequency and low frequency radiation. It costs $89.99, but considering the organs that happen to be around your lap, it might be worth it. But it's hard to create a barrier between you and every single device that might be emitting radiation. So perhaps the best way to protect yourself is by ingesting naturally protective substances. Bentonite clay not only removes radiation from the body, but also heavy metals, pollutants, bacteria, viruses, and even parasites. You can mix between one teaspoon and tablespoon in a glass of water and drink it without food. Or you can take curcumin, the active ingredient in the spice turmeric, as a daily supplement, which also has been shown to inhibit the growth of tumors. Foods rich in garlic, beta carotene, ginger, and seaweed have also been shown to have protective properties against radiation. Ingesting a natural supplement is probably the way to go anyway, considering the fact that at this point, no one has any idea how much radiation we're all being exposed to. The only thing we can be sure of is that we are being exposed to it on a daily basis. Tonight, Let's talk about that by following me on Twitter at The Resident. Texas family has won the world's first multi-million dollar lawsuit against a fracking company for environmental pollution. That's after drilling chemicals were found in their blood and lungs. Aussie's Abby Martin looks now into the landmark case and breaking the set. The full program is coming your way in two hours, but here's a preview. Last week, a Texas family saw a huge victory over fracking. The Parr family was just awarded $3 million after they were afflicted with illnesses caused by a fracking operation taking place on the outskirts of their ranch. According to Lisa Parr, the family experienced, quote, nosebleeds, vision problems, nausea, rashes, and blood pressure issues. Now, considering how the fracking industry has denied such problems are caused by the practice, this case is a landmark decision and a huge win for fracking opponents. However, it seems clear that the family has already been so severely damaged by the drilling operation that a monetary settlement seems too little too late. And considering that fracking injects over 700 chemicals into the earth, including known carcinogens, there is no way to know how exposure to these wells will affect the PARs later on in their lives, or, for that matter, anyone else who lives near fracking wells. <laughs> The nuclear plant in Southport has had more issues. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission will meet with Duke Energy May 12th in Atlanta to talk about apparent violations with flood protection. Specifically, some buildings had openings which might have allowed water in during a hurricane, including one that could have affected nine of the ten safety-related service water pumps on Unit 2. A new nuclear and renewable energy company will be expanding next year. Babcock and Wilcox currently employs more than 100 people at two locations in the Chattanooga area. They'll be moving to a new site at Center South Riverport and invest more than $4 million. Now, the company will also be adding 50 new jobs. The Chattanooga Area Chamber welcomes this move. Um, it's wonderful that a company that really creates high-wage, family-wage jobs is continuing to invest in the community and adding that number of positions is a, is a really strong statement about their commitment to our community. And the new facility is expected to be operational by January of next year. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.